hide all the insecurities. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hey, welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. About to get bumpy. You guys keep derailing me. I did, and I did it endearingly. <laughs> Will's got jokes. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Will is the Sarlacc pit. I love beer. I like that too. Pork broccoli. Snowflake. Hail Baphomet. Thank you guys for listening. I learned a lot. Keep up the good work. Welcome to the Jimmy Curve Podcast, everybody. Thank you for downloading. Thank you for listening. I am your host, Jimmy Putnam. With me, as always, is my co-host, Joshua Vossler. And with me, unusually and not always, guest sidekick, James Lindsay. Hello. Unfortunately, Will could not make it to the show today. So, uh, James has agreed to fill in as guest sidekick. Sidekicks work a little differently on the Jimmy Curve. Usually a sidekick supports the superhero in whatever it is he's doing. On this show, Will has established a pattern of tearing down the host. Okay. So uh, that's your job today, should you choose to accept it, is to shit on all my points and point out how all of my personality flaws uh, make me a terrible person. I shouldn't have a problem doing that. Okay. Thank you guys for leaving us feedback on iTunes. It is really helping out the show. I wanted to th specifically thank Andrew Morton. The identity of Hey You Mortichu has been discovered. So thank you, Andrew Morton. Thank you to uh, everyone else who's left us feedback. I, I thought one of the fun things to do would be to read some of my favorite Jimmy Curve feedback each week. So I'm going to read one this week. And uh, I, I wanted to read this one. So this was a five-star feedback of the Jimmy Curve left by Traditional Midwestern Values. It says, uh, five stars. This is a great show that has three hosts that are all in heterosexual monogamous marriages. I don't care for their comedy or witty takes on the news or the systematic bashing of every great top 40 hit, but their message to straight white males that you can be in a committed, faithful, traditional marriage is very much needed in this day and age. So if you think the Midwestern overweight white married male doesn't have enough power in this liberal main lamestream media today, listen to the Jimmy Curve. I swear it isn't about penises. Santorum 2016. So thank you to traditional Midwestern values for leaving that five-star feedback of our podcast. So this has been our last show, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, seriously, everybody, if you could, it would be a big help. Leave us feedback on iTunes. Leave us some positive commentary. The more we have, I don't care what you're right. Have fun with it. But the more five-star reviews we have of our show, the more chance we have of finding new listeners who will like or hate our values as they see fit. I don't do care you, as long as they listen. Do you think that person is somebody we know trying to be funny? Yes. Oh, all right. For sure. I thought it was just kind of an asshole. Someone I didn't know. <laughs> well, they like were, I, some random person. I love the idea that a random person discovered our show and was like, yes. Super conservative dude. This is, <laughs> this is the one. <laughs> I hate everything they do, but they're married. And marriage <laughs> right. is the most important thing. Right. Yeah. Unlike every other podcast. Anyways, let's get to our guest this week. Our guest this week is... Possibly the first person I met in the Nebraska comedy scene because we took level one improv at the same time together and have been dear friends ever since. The very funny Rachel Ware, everybody. Hey! Yeah, you're on the show today. Yay! 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 How are you doing, Rachel? I'm doing, w I'm doing well. I wasn't nervous until I realized I wasn't a white married male oh yeah you are wickedly out of place here i you um, are missing out <laughs> <laughs> i wanna i wanna hunker down with a nice lady get her all wet up and <laughs> 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 we're off and running uh well, cool <laughs> so i don't know i want a sound effect after everything i say Boom! Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Yeah. All right. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, okay, Rachel Ware. <laughs> Rachel, you are a co-owner 
of the Backline Improv Theater. Yes. Um, you primarily do improv, long form improv comedy. You also dabble in stand up and sketch and a number of other things. Absolutely. I joined the level one improv class that we had together on a whim. What was your motivation? Dylan Rohde forced me to. And that, wow. Anyways, <laughs> uh, so I was a, I went to Wayne State College and I was a theater major. Did you start out as a theater major? Yes. See, I only became a theater major to finish college. I started out as an engineering major. And then I was like, this is work. But you, you were on that path at the beginning. Yeah. Mostly just be, I had done shows ever since I was young, like mm-hmm. really little. And mm-hmm. so I wanted, I had like the Broadway dream. You've also done some voiceover stuff, right? Uh huh. Uh, yeah, you actually have an IMDb page. I do. Go look at it. Go look at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're on the show too. Yay! 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 Yay. Yay. Yeah, so I was uh, doing theater at Wayne State College, and my professor was like, hey, we have this improviser coming in from I.O. out west in California and UCB, and he's really funny, and he's going to do a, a weekend-long intensive, and uh, because you're all majors, you have to take this class. Huh. And everyone did not want to take it and was very uh, resistant to even uh, making eye contact with Dylan. Dylan Rohde, by the way, is the founder of the backline. So took the class afterwards. Dylan had given me praise about how I seemed like a natural and that I had told him I was moving to Omaha and that's where he was starting up the backline. He really wanted me to do it. I said, no, I hated it. And uh, it took about <laughs> over a year of him emailing me every month saying, hey, come take this class. We have new level one starting. Come take this. You're really funny. I thought he was just being creepy, but I eventually <laughs> ended up saying yes to the class. Yes. And I didn't. I said yes. And I uh, I still didn't really. I don't know. I don't know how you really felt about it. We haven't talked about it in a while, but I didn't really enjoy the class very much. I it, have a weird relationship with comedy. So I think my reaction to a lot of things is probably like not very helpful to a lot of people. But I mean, yeah, I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. Like it was not it was never pleasurable to me. I was it was something I've. Since that class, comedy is kind of a thing I've been forcing myself to do, and it's never not been that way. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt doing it, too, where I was excited at the idea of being funny, but also attending a class that I was not funny in was horrible. I didn't like it. So I did, I guess, uh, right. so did the whole class, and it wasn't until our class show that I was like, oh, like. I want to do this. Like, this is fun. Right. See, my perception of you, though, is that you were great right away. I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> not not remotely as much <laughs> as me and the absentee Will Doherty hate, ours, hate each other and ourselves. Like, there's a lot of hate on this show. That's okay. Hey, uh, listen, you all can hate yourselves equally, I feel like. It's not a competition. But you've had some success in improv. I mean, you've I've, had good shows, been on good teams. Yeah. Well, I've been lucky enough to be on teams with what I think are 10,000 times funnier people than me. <laughs> so I, the first team I got put on, it was an arena show right after I graduated level one a week later. And it was with Nick Rowley, Tracy Mock, and Justin Johnson. Mm-hmm. That was, And I remember thinking like, why the fuck am I on this team? Mm-hmm. Like just being, again, that thing where you're just like, I can't, I'm not good enough. Right. I can't do this. I like, my, I like <clears throat> the, I don't do improv. I've never taken an improv class or anything, but my favorite thing to do, and I only say this because I, I probably never will, is that when I'm around people and it sounds like it's hard work, like you got to take classes and stuff and there's, certain methods and things you have to learn. I'm just like, I do stand-up comedy, you know, and I'm just like, I could do that. I don't need to take any classes. You know Absolute, what I mean? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I, I hear that so often from people, too, and it's, you know what well, I mean? Well, there, I think there's a misperception that taking a class means somebody is telling you what to do, and that's not really what improv class is about. Improv classes are more about teach, uh, giving you some tools to work with other people. Mm-hmm. It's more about learning how to uh, learning how to analyze what other people are doing and react to it effectively. Like no one ever tells you what to say or what joke to make or like how to structure a thing you're doing. It's games and it's practice it's practicing awareness really of other because when you're doing improv you're in 
you're you're all you're in a group of other people who are all trying to be funny and no two people have the exact same methods for producing uh, a comedic performance but there are ways to blend each person's unique style together into one show and it's hard to just do that naturally without training did i say that yeah you're right well, i mean yeah. it's totally it's a totally lo wrong premise because it's like watching somebody play guitar really well and me yeah. not knowing how to play the guitar at all but if I practice, I could probably learn to play the guitar like that, or maybe not. Oh yeah, but it would right. take practice. Yeah, you know what I mean. The thing right. about improv, it's you know that it's improv, so it seems made up. Right, well, it is. Right. Mm -hmm. Certain as the aspects of the punchlines are made up, right? But the method mm -hmm. in which you come up with whatever, that's you know. Absolutely, well, yeah. I always, I always call uh, learning long form improv is like learning a magic trick. Like you see the trick, and I'm always instantly like, "Oh, that's amazing!" And then when you realize that the magician just looks at the card before they put it back in the deck, you're like, "Oh, <laughs> right, like, right. that's what improv class is to me." Where it's like finding the game. There's, there's tricks. Like I don't, I wouldn't ever call it cheating. It is completely, honestly, mm -hmm. made up on the spot. But it's there's tricks. You, you can. Well, you've been doing um, stand-up now, too, for a shorter amount of time than doing long-form improv. What mm -hmm. what are the differences in your experience from doing those two different forms of comedy? It's really hard because I thought I would always like long-form improv to the grave. Um, I really, really, really like doing stand-up. And the difference, I like both improv and stand-up for different reasons. One of the reasons I like stand-up is I like going into a show knowing I have a funny joke. Right. No matter how awful the crowd is, no matter how low energy I am, I know that this joke is funny because people have laughed at it before. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't go into an improv show thinking that. It'll be detrimental. <laughs> I've I've made the mistake myself of preloading something for an improv show, and it one hundred percent of the time goes terribly. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's you the can't. Worst you thing can't you can do, do. Uh huh. It's one of those things where you realize. I I think of that as cheating. At a certain point, you learn growing up, because like kids cheat at board games and stuff like that. But at a certain point, you learn that that takes the fun out of the game. Right. <laughs> Same yeah. kind of principle. And you don't learn that until it's too late. Exactly. <laughs> Game's exactly. over. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so you are now partial owner of the Backline Improv Theater. So you've gone from fresh-faced, nervous, self-hating improv <laughs> student to commanding improv in Nebraska. <laughs> to sunken face, still hating yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Plus doing stand-up. So like, this is the... What's the end? Is there an end game? Do you have a goal in comedy in general? Where is it all going? I'm seeing how, as vague as it is, I'm seeing how far I can go until mm -hmm. I feel like I'm. I like, like that answer. Here's here's where it is because that's kind of how it all started. Just me going, okay, I'll take level one. Okay, I guess I'll take level two. Okay, and that went all the way through five, and then it was. Okay, I guess I will join up with the back line. Okay, I guess I will start doing stand up and things like that. So I guess, I mean, it's everyone. I feel like everyone in Omaha says, I want to move away. Yeah. Um, I love being a big fish in a small pond. <laughs> I really do. Yeah. I praise. I love praise. And I get a lot of it here. Um, well, I you're doing a great job on the show. I just want to let you know. <laughs> Thank you. You're killing it. <laughs> Yeah. Now, well, I mean, before you before you took that level one class that you had to be talked into, I mean, did you have a plan then for your life, or did you want to be an actress, or what? Was I it? wanted to be an actress really bad. Right yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to go to New York of all places, and I wanted to. My next step was learning how to dance. I really wanted to be on Broadway. Oh, awesome! So bad. Mary is taking tap classes. That's all. I am so jealous of you. I really <laughs> am. Saturday mornings. I might. I might do it. I. It's so much fun. It's the one thing holding me back. I got <laughs> so excited. I went to go see Wicked when I was younger and like in high school uh, when my dream was huge about uh, wanting to be on Broadway. And I went with my mom and we were watching the show. I'd never seen it before. And one of the characters in the show is in a wheelchair. And my mom goes, look, you can be on Broadway. Just put you in a chair. Don't move or dance. <laughs> Just, you know. <laughs> Don't do anything. So, yeah, that was my dream for a long time. And it wasn't until I started doing comedy where I was like, oh, I can have fun unrehearsed. And, <laughs> you know, people still will clap for me. And that, yeah. That's Rachel, you were present at the 
inception of the Jimmy Curve graph. Uh, I don't know if you recall this. Do you know the Jimmy Curve graph? Are you familiar with it? Oh, yes. It's a bell curve Uh with uh, intelligence on the axis, on the X axis, having your shit together on the Y axis. Uh, The peak of the curve is known as the sweet spot. Yes. Where do you place yourself on the Jimmy Curve? I think I've, I'm plotted like somewhere else on the page, mm. like just not even in the graph really. An outlier. But yeah. Like just waiting. I, my, my dot <laughs> is being patient and figuring out where, where she lies. Good. Can we talk about the time that I told you to break up with your boyfriend? Yes. Uh, and then you told your boyfriend that I told you that. <laughs> and then he confronted me. I'm just, I'm bringing this up because it's maybe the worst I've ever felt in my life and you were involved. And I wanted to discuss this. So here's something that I, I like about you, Jimmy. You say what you want to say. Yeah. Most no people matter, hate that. no matter who it hurts. <laughs> and I think this was just the one time that you had said something so awful that I was like, I can't not say anything. And right. th- the level of offense I felt, though, was still pretty low, considering. I mean, it was one of those you had had. You no had one had else a- did anything wrong. I, I, can I tell you why? Yes. Here, here's why I'm like that. It's about self-esteem. I never think that anyone is listening or paying attention <laughs> or taking seriously anything I say. If I actually thought that my words could affect someone else's life, I would never speak. When I say shit like that, what I actually said to you, I think I was just trying to be complimentary and be like, "I, you could do so much better. Like, you're, I was trying to tell you how great you were. But it came out in the form of... It was angry. Uh, in, the, in the form of an aggressive attack against your boyfriend. And, and an assault on your relationship. And like, uh. But like, in my mind... Those were just words that no one was going to listen to or pay attention to or take seriously. So later when I found out that like feelings were really hurt, I was like, what have I done? It was like I was building a bomb out of Legos. Then it exploded in a school. And you're like, why'd my bomb explode? <laughs> right. I was like, I was just bombs with aren't Legos. supposed to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I do remember this night. Now, in everyone's defense, we were all drinking. Lots of alcohol was involved. So, so much beer. Right. And I think, and I totally understand where you were coming from, too. It was just recently brought up in another conversation about the the kind of compliment when someone goes you're really you're really lucky to have so and so or something <laughs> right because it's like you're trying to be really nice like oh you have a mm-hmm. great person but it's also coming off as but i'm not complimenting you <laughs> right um right. and i think you were somewhere you you were looking back on it mm-hmm. I, I totally know where you're coming from but again the situation was god it, if anything, I think it's pretty funny. I do. Wait, Jimmy, you it, made a comment about no, me do. like out yeah, picking right. my coverage and I didn't yeah. even know you very well. Yeah. Yeah, you had just you had just met my wife. And I, I think and I was fun. like, boy, you really out kicked your coverage? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just And I'm like, Oh, it's Jimmy, right? I, like I hardly knew you. <laughs> That's, like, that, again, like again like i was just trying to be funny and like i never think of anybody would think about that or take it home and be like god i can't did you hear what jimmy said if i thought of i i couldn't i couldn't do this podcast if i thought people actually listened i have to imagine that all of these things that i'm saying out loud are just inside my head and no one because like <laughs> the way i always interpret this like when you and i rachel had that conversation my assumption of it was just gonna be like nah, jimmy's talking again and then that would be it you know right. what i mean or just being like oh jimmy uh right when i think about people talking about me it's always like dude you should have heard this stupid thing that this douchebag jimmy said again you know and then they say it it was like no nah, whatever he doesn't know anything and then that's it the point where people take my words seriously is confusing to me because i don't value them like i don't value in my own thoughts which is bizarre because i scream them at people i know i was gonna say but you're so passionate about (laughs) them you know what i was talking to who was i talking to oh so me and james Lindsay and annie hildebrand and will doherty stayed up really late till five in the morning playing what i affectionately call the ryan dowd game because it's a game that ryan dowd created where you go around the circle telling each other one thing you hate about them oh 
God. And, and you and you have a bottle of Jack and a razor blade. Much and you <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And it's really fun. <laughs> so, but I was defending me being stubborn, which is a thing I hear a lot. And you were defending being stubborn? No, no. So, I, was, oh. I was accused of being stubborn, and I hate hearing that about myself. But the the example brought up of me being stubborn about something was an argument about a topic. And I, I remembered having the argument, but it was a topic that I didn't care about. And I didn't even remember. I didn't even recognize it as an argument. Like, I thought I was just throwing out ideas, <laughs> and we were riffing on stuff. But the perception was that I was like, attempting to subject, subvert everyone to my way of thinking. But I think it's just because of how I sound and act. But, like, I I didn't even realize we were arguing. I think it's just who I am as I a person yeah, that makes me that words way. I but... say and how I act. The people yeah. get away from me. <laughs> well, they get uh, this vibe. <laughs> because my reaction to it was, like, that. Like, there are, like, I, rem- I know I've, like, yelled at people about stuff that I believe before. But this was one where I was, like, I don't even remember caring. You know, it's Jesus. just how, so <laughs> do you guys want to have some fun now and play a game? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's play a trivia game with us. As I said earlier, or as I haven't said earlier, depending on how I edit this is, uh, my wife, Mary Putnam, and we're going to play a little movie trivia. She finally found a way to get on the show. It's Mary's <laughs> trivia time. Oh, All right. Yay. <laughs> so, uh, what the game, we're going to do some movie trivia. The game is going to be books that were made into movies, and Mary is going to re- read the first line from the book, and then we're going to have to guess the movie. Uh, Mary, let's hear the first uh, question, or the first first line from a novel. The scent and sm- smoke and sweat of a casino are nauseating at three in the morning. One more time. The scent and smoke and sweat of a casino are nauseating at three in the morning. (laughs) Okay, uh, let's see what we got. Joshua. I don't know if this was ever a book, but I'm going with the movie Casino. Okay. (laughs) James. Uh, I also went with Casino. Rachel. I put Twilight. I put Casino Royale. Ding! I get it. Point for Jimmy. You guys are fucking. This isn't fair. (laughs) (laughs) You You guys cheat. We just talked about cheating and how it's not... How it's not as rewarding. Part of the me wanting to do this game is that I cool. thought I would do well at it. <laughs> Great. All right, let's do the next. Let's do the like second fun. one. Mike Bowman whistled cheerfully as he drove the Land Rover through the Cabo Blanco Biological Reserve on the west coast of Costa Rica. Rach, what do you got? Uh, Jurassic Park three. I wrote Jurassic Park. Uh, I have Biodome with Polly Shore. <laughs> 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 I also have Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. Mary. Okay. No one would have believed in the last years of the 19th century that this world was being watched keenly and closely by intelligences greater than man's and yet as mortal as his own, that as men busied themselves about their various concerns, they were scrutinized and studied, perhaps almost as narrowly as a man with a microscope might scrutinize the transient creatures that swarm and multiply in a drop of water. Holy shit. Is that one sentence? Yes. How many commas? Um, That'll give me a lot of information. <laughs> Only one comma, but it also has a semicolon. The the key was end of the 19th century, mm-hmm. and that means the 1800s, right? Mm-hmm. I've got War of the Worlds. I have the children's movie Fern Gully. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> eh. James. Okay. War of the Worlds. I put Mars Attack. War of the Worlds. Uh. Damn, that was my second guess. <laughs> I want to come up with some funny answers, but damn it, I just know everything. <laughs> I know nothing. I know nothing, and my answers aren't even funny. So <laughs> I think I'm in the worst spot here. Right. Uh, you- Did you just... Okay, I want everyone to know that Jimmy just pointed to my name on the paper where he's keeping score just to <laughs> affirm that I have no points. I- <laughs> I, I thought you had a point, and I was going to point out that you're doing better than Joshua, but you are not. <laughs> I'm not. No, I'm so, losing. Uh, I'm right. losing. Mary, let's... Sucking hind tit. To... <laughs> what is what? that? That's not an Hold expression. On. That's a dory is. Uh, it's a willism. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. I've heard Will say that. Yeah. What is it again? Sucking hind tit. Will Doherty makes you sad. Another one? <laughs> yeah. Marley was dead to begin with. 
<laughs> this uh, this is the classic novel, Marley and Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing that's what James had too. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is a Christmas did, Carol. Ding. What? Ah. The ghost. Did name you put is down? Marley. Did you put down Marley, Marley and, me? and Me? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I put. Mm-hmm. Uh, what it, so let's talk about really quick about what that movie would be like if the dog died was just dead at the beginning <laughs> and was a ghost the whole time <laughs> and then the ghost died like Casper it came alive and then it died again oh you went Casper yeah I was going with like some real Inception shit going on here mm. like you know like the or like some uh, what's the what's the or it uh, comes back like uh, Kojo or, or whatever Cujo Cujo yeah what's the movie right. what's the M Night Shyamalan movie oh. I don't the know. Village. Sixth Sense. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I was just naming the best one. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just give me a point? Fuck Half yes. a point. Ah. Right. I I almost go got kicked out of Marley and Me, the movie. Really? Yeah. Uh, my friend and I in high school went to go see it at the Dollar Theater, and we snuck in beers and got super wasted. And <laughs> I, I all. All dog movies, the dog dies, but for whatever reason, I had convinced myself that the dog wasn't going to die. Right. Spoiler, the dog dies. Yeah. Uh, so when the dog died, we wailed. I mean, and it was a pretty crowded- <laughs> like drunken it, teenagers. <laughs> yeah. Oh Just losing your shit. That's, <laughs> it, no, uh, Ebenezer Scrooge's assistant, like po- poverty-stricken assistant's name was Marley. Mm-hmm. He was a ghost. Assistant, yeah. or was it his partner? Oh, yeah, it was his old partner. That's Haunted right. him, chains, no yeah. noises. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Scary. All right. Mary, next one. Once there were four children whose names were Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy. Mm. James, Lindsay, what do you got? Alvin and the Chipmunks 2, the Squeakwolf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, that's not oh. Boom, nailed it. <laughs> Rachel? Uh, Swiss Family Robinson? No. I have the correct answer. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Oh, correct. Oh, I put the horror movie Critters 4 starring Angela Bassett. (laughs) Once again, acting on the assumption that every movie was at one time a book. Right. Yeah. (laughs) All right. (laughs) We'll do a a couple more. I've I've created a game that only I am good at because it's based entirely off of something that only I care about. Oh, well, I assume we'd be playing this forever then. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be doing it every week on the Jimmy Curve. The, now. the, <laughs> podca- the podcast will come out and we find out that after we all left, Jimmy and Mary went back on, re-recorded over my interview, <laughs> just more of this game. Correct. <sighs> Uh, all right, Mary. What else you got? I'm gonna start just writing down my answer before she. Reads. Uh, by the way, I want to. <laughs> yeah, I want right? to make this also very clear. I have not. I've only read one of these books. It's weird. You're jerking yourself off right now. Yeah, it's not that weird. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mary. Tyler gets me a job as a waiter. After that, Tyler's pushing a gun in my mouth and saying, "The first step to eternal life is you have to die." Fight Club. Correct. Everybody got Fight Club? Fight Club. No, I put, uh, How Stella Got Her Groove Back, <laughs> also starring Angela Bassett. Uh, I, I actually did know that one. Okay. Good. Hey. Giving you a point. Uh, next one, Mary. Every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. Joshua, what do you got? Uh, I put Human Centipede, <laughs> starring Angela Bassett. <laughs> Angela Bassett. I should just do Angela Bassett movies. Uh, James, uh, The Grinch. Yeah. Uh, not technically. The Rachel, what do you have? Oh, How the Grinch right. stole Christmas. There we there go. Damn it. You uncultured <laughs> swine. <laughs> I'm giving James the point. Okay. Jim yeah. Carrey was in that. You. Do you show him respect? <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four, Privet uh, Drive, were proud Jimmy. to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. Josh, do you actually know one? Yeah, yeah, you know this one. Huh? You know this one, right? No, I don't know that. Do you really not? I never, I also have what never, I never read one of these books. Read and I still know oh, what it is. So. I would not so have good. known this. Mm. Read it again. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four, Privet mm. Drive, were proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. All right. So, Joshua, what do you have? No clue. Um, I put Waiting to Exhale, <laughs> starting Whitney Houston, but also co-starring Angela, Angela Bassett. Bassett. <laughs> right. James? I was hoping you'd say Harry Potter starring Angela Bassett. <laughs> <laughs> Just, but I really want, I, I'm not fooling around. I want 
Angela Bassett to actually be in these movies. <laughs> See if I knew who that was, I might this. pick a movie. Uh, James, do you actually know that Harry Potter is not going to do it? You got to give uh, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Excellent. You went with the, the Brit- Philosopher's Stone. The original, the original That's British right. title. Oh, That's right. right. Yeah. That's right. Oh I have Go never, I have never read a Harry Potter book, and the only Harry Potter movie I've ever seen is the first half to the last movie. Yeah. I, okay. I am the most hated person. I read the first three just because you there's you can knock them out in a day almost. Like they're really? so fast. They're children's books. They and read like, quick. They read real quick and they were kind of fun. But after the first like two or three books, I was like, I've gotten out of this. What I need to get out of it. It was it got real repetitive and like the characters weren't very interesting. And, um, the movies are so well made, though, that they're kind of fun. There is a YouTube, this big YouTube thing. Brad Neely uh, is this kind of cartoon guy who overdubbed the whole first movie of Harry Potter <laughs> and, like, speaks all the voices and stuff. But, like, he he's renamed all the characters <laughs> and, like, uh, that he, has, he has this really nasally voice. He talks like this. And there's it just... <laughs> absolutely fucking hilarious he calls mm-hmm. harry's cousin like ragtime roast beefy was like <laughs> <laughs> it sounds funny it's great i do i want to give james an extra half point for using harry potter and the philosopher's stone mm-hmm. the original british title of the book before it was changed to sorcerer's stone in america uh all right mary two more what were we war danes in our your days <laughs> uh one more time <clears throat> What were we war Danes in our your days? I got Hamlet. Nope. <sighs> Why? Danes. Mm. He's Danish. He's the Danish prince. Was it Danes uh, or Dames? Danes. D A N E. As in Danish, yes. Oh. Hamlet. I, yeah. I Sorry. was going to go 101 Dame Nations. <laughs> okay. Good guess. James? Going off the assumption that it was dames with a D, uh, a league of their own. (laughs) I put, uh, what's love got to do with it? The (laughs) Tina Turner story starring Angela Bassett. (laughs) This one was the oldest book on the list. Beowulf. Oh. Oh, Okay. Yeah. Okay. That shitty God damn. CGI one. I was about to. I like that movie. I was about to run this. You really like that movie? I like it. I mean, I guess. Fair enough. Yeah, is it? Well. <laughs> All right, Mary, one I more. also I... have liked every movie I've said so far. <laughs> I kept this last one here because I liked it, even though it doesn't give a lot of the book away. Okay. So if you know it, you know it. Oh, well. Okay. If you're going to read this, don't bother. Oh. Joshua. Hmm. It was just a fun line. To have the book start that way. Yeah, I. This sounds so familiar. Me too. I can All right. Still give you okay. the author's name. Who's the author? I didn't know he ever directed a movie. Chuck. Poloniak. Poloniak. Oh. Oh. oh okay. Uh. He wrote Fight Club. Yeah. Yeah. That's not what this is. Fight Club Two: The Awakening. <laughs> <laughs> Starring. Starring. Angela Bassett. There it is. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I yeah. don't know. This is choke. Yeah, oh, I was gonna say oh, choke. I didn't get a say mine. Oh, hadn't yeah. heard anybody what, say what was their your... name on the mine last one. Mine was Vampire in Brooklyn, starring Eddie Murphy <laughs> and Angela Bassett. Yeah. Yes. It was I, the I don't know. Score. Josh has been doing great. Even oh. if, even if I took this game seriously and didn't write down only Angela Bassett movies, I still wouldn't have gotten any of those. Really? So, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, everybody knows Josh's score. Rachel three and a half. James five and a half. Jimmy eight. Mm. It's the final score. So. Mm. Well, I enjoyed playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, so, but this will probably be its final appearance as a game on this show. But you well, know, it was fun. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming on, Mary. She finally found a way to get on the show. It's Mary's trivia time. Yay. Let's uh, yay! Let's do some news. Joshua. 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 Bossler. News. I'd like to see your license registration, please. And uh, uh, why are you laughing? I feel like you're not taking this very seriously. (laughs) I wish I could, like, make my voice sound a lot younger. How do you do that? I don't know. (laughs) 
Cross, uh, cross your legs. Without what? <laughs> <laughs> Does that work? I'm, I'm just saying that because you're wearing a skirt and you've exposed yourself to me all night. <laughs> I uh, I used to do high school. You're welcome. <laughs> like when I was in high school, I do the high school musicals, and one of the things our singing coach would always say, like to hit the high notes, pretend there's a quarter between your butt cheeks. And just like squeeze it, like you don't want that quarter to drop. And James, I hate to tell you this, but you were molested. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. The, oh, those naked rehearsals make sense. All right, all right, so children, I... spread your cheeks. I have a, a ten dollar roll of quarters. Like, let's, let's get it's rehearsal going. This will help you sing, assuming you don't already have quarters in your butt. <laughs> where else would I keep them? <laughs> Let's hear the story. A uh, 19-year-old Pennsylvanian uh, named uh, Logan Shoeless set up his own DUI checkpoint early Saturday. (laughs) (laughs) Complete with flares, and he had a BB gun and handcuffs and a portable scanner. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh, Did you say his name was Shoeless? Yeah, Shoeless. La- Later, Lucas was also voted most uncool kid in school. <laughs> uh, the slight problem with the scenario is that he was super drunk. Oh, fuck. <laughs> this uh, is my uh, new favorite person. After revote, Lucas got voted the coolest kid in school. <laughs> When police arrived, they say that Shoeless tried to uh, hand the BB gun he had to a passenger, saying, I can't get caught with this. <laughs> Shoeless uh, got arrested and faces a litany of charges consisting of carrying a firearm without a license, driving under the influence of alcohol, un- unlawful restraint, uh, possessing oh, an instrument God. of crime, official oppression, criminal coercion, reckless endangerment, <laughs> impersonating a public servant, <laughs> harassment, Disorderly conduct and public drunkenness. What was his first name? Lucas. Uh, Logan. I don't know, but that guy's awesome. Shoeless. He's he. That so was he, a roller coaster. So he got. <laughs> so he got drunk. Yeah. And then set up a check, like a DUI checkpoint. And he didn't have like a squad car or anything. I don't want. No, pe- I don't think so. I don't want people like me on the road. So I'm gonna <laughs> stop him. That guy is amazing. And then he started. Waving cars down, yeah. waving a BB gun in their face. <laughs> what did I, was awesome. he just like wandering around his garage? He's like, oh, there's some flares. <laughs> yeah. was, That's what I wonder. Like, did he get drunk and have this idea? Yeah. Or did he like plan it out? Have you he... guys ever like been drunk or high or whatever and started having fantasies about being a superhero and what would that would be like? Because this guy did. And then he was like, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to go save the world. Is how I see this going down. Like I just don't. Yeah, there's some questions there that I I want to know what he. I made a joke about him being the coolest or most uncool. I want to know how many f- good friends he has. Right. He said someone was with him, right? No, he was by himself, and he's 19. He passed the gun to yeah, who he passed? Yeah, to, that the like person he, he had. There was arrested? a car there that he had stopped, oh. and when the cop showed up, oh my god, threw, even better, he, he threw put the, the gun gun's. in <laughs> someone yeah, else's. Yeah, yeah. They get for planting evidence. <laughs> I hope he grows up to be a cop. I really do. I don't think he can. Though. Not with that right no. <laughs> Oh, my God. I think I, I found I, the white male I want to marry. That guy, I'm assuming he's white. If this, he's smart, he would have put on, like, a GoPro and would have done it that way. It's almost too bad because the whole thing. He, this guy actually has the, the audacity to, like, be a politician. Now he can't be, like... <laughs> The, it, his his confidence in him in his own ability <laughs> is, is alarming, and it could have caused it could he could have been a great man. You could learn something about confidence from Logan. From Logan Shallus. Oh, I want him to be my mentor. I want it. He is we the get person. Him to call the show. I was just going to say, so you far should've... the person we've talked about that I most want to interview. I see if I can get him on. Why not? When he gets out of jail. Yeah. Oh, is he in jail? Oh, I'm sure his parents. What else is he doing with his phone call? I'll try and get him on the show. Find him on Twitter. Oh, God. I hope he's just great, too. He lives in Pennsylvania, and we have his name. Yeah, how hard is it going to be? Not hard at all. Right. (laughs) Hell, yeah. We are are contacting him. I bet you I could even look up his social security number and his blood type. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. I want to be on that show again. I want to talk to him. I want to see if he'll... I want to know if he would go on a date with me. <laughs> I think that's what I want. So if we can call him, I want to ask him out. 
can I chaperone? Yeah, I, I, I well, would, so- I would want someone there. <laughs> so, uh, because I'm gonna get wasted, and if he gets yes. wasted, we <laughs> only oh, know total chaos. I wonder if we I... can find his mugshot picture. A lot of those are online. Can we? We can find out what county jail he was. Can we like Kickstarter like and get donations for me to, to go on him. a date with this guy? No, let's Kickstarter. You First of all, we have, we have to come up with him. a legal defense. What do you mean? I need to see the you don't see need the to guy. See him? No, because love is eternal. Blind. Love, love is blind. I am. I'm feeling nervous blind. about him. Like oh, he just oh, okay. he got my heart a fluttering. Do I want to see? He's gorgeous. Did you really find him? He looks super young. Oh fuck yeah! He's, well, yeah. he's, he's all over Bing. He's nineteen. Yeah. Oh, there oh, he you're, is. Mm. You're messing with the cords there, buddy. Sorry. It's yeah. worth it. It's worth it. Yeah, we got to see what okay. this guy looks like. Get him on the so show. Anyone listening, um, donate money so we can, so I can meet this guy. We'll I've, start a Kickstarter for You guys, it. what if I do end up marrying him? He, he could come on the yes. show all the time with each, like, whatever crazy scheme he cooks up each week. Won't be the only thing he's coming on. Oh, hey, what? Uh, <laughs> 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 Boom! Nailed it. Oh, <laughs> uh, boy. All right. Uh, <laughs> cool. What else you got? Uh, I should just... Do, uh, like, I, I feel like we should talk about Logan Shallis for another half an hour, but we got to move it uh, on. I, mean, yeah. I need, like, a whole section of news just for doctors doing weird shit that is cool. <laughs> and, like, okay. good things happen from it. All right. Uh, researchers say that a modified version of the herpes virus that causes cold sores has led to a major breakthrough for cancer patients. The genetically engineered virus stopped melanoma by killing cancer cells and sparking the immune system into action. Researchers from the uh, from Britain's Institute of Cancer Research uh, said that. This is the first time a virus has been used to fight skin cancer. You're welcome. For <laughs> oh, you were part of that study? Yeah. <laughs> Every, everyone who donated I, yeah. the cells now. <laughs> they what they did is they took the virus and they actually injected it into the cancerous skin cells. The herpes well, virus. They took a modified version of it. They tweaked it a little bit. This sounds like an awful version of "Would you rather?" Okay, would you <laughs> rather have cancer or herpes? What's it? Ama- so they've cured cancer. Uh, at least they found a good way to treat skin cancer with a virus. I don't. There was something where they took HIV and they. Did something to the genetic makeup of it so that it would kill cancer and not kill you with HIV. Really? Yeah. See, that's the interesting stuff. Like, I just, the idea of, like, taking bad things. Because we talk about, like, mm-hmm. you, we did one about, like, they doctors used urine for something and it turned out to be, like, beneficial or something. Like, it's weird. It's like the researchers just sitting around and be like, hmm, we haven't done much with herpes. Let's try <laughs> rubbing some herpes stuff on it. <laughs> let's, just like, start, let's just start injecting it into shit. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, where did they come up with the idea to do that? I don't it's, know, because I have this idea. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's the only reason I'm going to continue to drink heavily and smoke a lot of pot, because one day right. they're going to be like, that saved, that actually saved her life. Well, like, I have this concept of research on med- medical stuff being done, like, on a dry erase board with long math equations. But that's just how I imagine in my head research being done. I really don't know if it's a in a lab with a chemistry set or just a guy in his garage drunk. Like I don't know. I don't know <laughs> how people come up with this stuff. Huh? There's a lab. <laughs> Viruses are the simplest things to mess with the DNA on. Oh really? Yeah. Why is that? Because of how they make more of viruses of themselves there's, isn't it isn't there there's less ne- mixing yeah. and more just like they clone themselves i think it's like that scene from uh i am legend where you just like you test you know a bunch of rats and right you know whatever rats don't die while well, you're onto something there i just i think there's an inevitability <laughs> to all of this stuff like i have this weird idea in my head given enough time there's an inevitability to like everybody's gonna try combining everything with everything else and we'll find a cure for cancer and a use for herpes and all of this stuff. Like, that and was going to happen. a drunk teenager pulling over people for yeah, DUI. Yeah, someone's going to try everything and eventually we'll figure it all out. <laughs> that was that was a weird, long thing to say. What, what did they do find? They find a virus that's a cure-all for everything else that's wrong with you. <laughs> right. I want to make sure it's that say, life short, get herpes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and get drunk and and, you know. and pull people over with BB guns. Yeah. I'm just still so all about him. You got all a flutter. 
I feel in love. <laughs> I felt this way in a while. You got uh, any other stories yeah, about Logan Sholas? No, I don't. Uh, this one's kind of crazy, though. Uh, over the course of 20 months, a broken-hearted 32-year-old man shelled out a total of 700 and thir- $713,975 to a fortune teller who promised to make the woman he loved love him back. One of the payments was $80,000 uh, to buy a "Quote unquote bridge of gold in the spiritual, spiritual, spiritual. I can't say that spiritual, spiritual realm. Incredibly, the man kept up the fortune, uh, the fortune teller at, even after the woman he sought died, because the fortune teller promised to uh, reincarnate her spirit into another woman. He's broke now, and uh, Priscilla Kelly Del Mero, the 26-year-old gypsy, is charged with grand larceny." You say, how oh. does a guy like that have seven hundred and eighty thousand dollars in the first place? That's a good question. Yeah, yeah. Well, how well, how he, can she get charged? Uh, He's the dumb he one. He inherited it. The only answer. Yeah, there's. God damn it! He couldn't have got it himself. He's too oh. dumb. He well, could have spent that that over seven hundred thousand dollars on the woman. She yeah, probably, she probably would have went yeah. out. With I'd him. blow a guy for that much money. <laughs> well, hey, well, she I'd blow a guy for that. Much money. <laughs> Wait, in those twenty months, the woman died. Yeah, how did she die? Wait, how old is this guy? The gypsy probably killed her. You know what I mean? Was she hit she by a car, up. or was this? It doesn't. Was, it didn't say. Was this guy like eighty-five? He's thirty-two. Oh, she had she had cancer and refused. Herpes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there there are three possibilities. Uh, either this guy is so gullible you could have convinced him of anything. Two, this fortune teller is such a mastermind trickster that she could sell anything to anybody. Or three, this was just like a perfect symbiosis of like dumb and shrewd. Only this pairing of people could have transferred $700,000. I... I'm actually a little upset that the lady's getting in trouble. Me too. I right. I mean, she she pulled it off. I mean, she did it. She got charged with grand larceny, but she she's really not doing anything different than any other fortune teller does. So why aren't they charged with any sort of larceny? It's, or it's stock like stock market guy. I mean, you yeah, pay somebody to buy to stocks tell you what you, you. want to hear. You pay yeah. someone to tell you what you want to hear. It's why I teach improv class. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't need it. Is the does the amount of money is that what makes it grand larceny? Well, yeah, I mean it'd be the yes. So like but, it'd just be larceny if it was forty bucks and it wouldn't be worth prosecuting. Well, I don't know. That's what this says in Nebraska. Like there's degrees, right? So based right. on severity. Where did this happen? I think New York. I want to. God, these stories. I want to know. I'm like less about what actually happened. Tell me about this guy. Can like, we look who, up her picture? Because they won't. They won't yeah, prosecute. Right? They won't prosecute you for just starting like a small fire I wonder, I wonder out in the street. But if you burn down a house, then that's grand arsony. Maybe there's laws against arson, you know, or whatever. psychics or something in New York. Now. Maybe there's what laws against how you can take money as a psychic in New York. Like, maybe they had to crack down on him. I mean, see, I kind of go the other way on you guys. Like, I'm glad she's getting... Pro- I think all psychics should be prosecuted. I think that's a crime. I think I, I think it's it, it's con artistry. I think people who believe in psychics should be put away. Yeah. So everyone that goes to church on Sunday also Zing! needs to be put away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I mean, shit. I... Shit. She said that. She said it. I, I, <laughs> I mean... Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. shouldn't be able to con people out of money, though. Some yeah, people but... really believe in psychics. That some of the psychics believe that they really can do things. I mean, how is that any different from any other belief? Miss Mary, Mary has a point. Those mega churches they they make like hundreds of thousand dollars every weekend, and they're promising things that people want to hear and everything. Come like to that. church, and when what you die, what, you'll see heaven. What's the difference? Mm-hmm. God, I, my problem with those mega churches is that they're tax free. Like, yeah. I hate I that so much. I saw something where, like, if you tax churches, you'd have enough money to feed, like, every child in the world, like, seven times over. But the amount of money we give churches just through tax breaks alone. Right. At least this gypsy was paying taxes. I don't have any sympathy yeah. for the dude who gave her $700,000. Oh. I just think that, like, taking it should be a crime. 
Maybe not. I don't know. I, I want to know what this this lady he was into was like. She must have been something else, huh? You so know, seven hundred. You know, at the same time, though, you know, there are some people. I mean, what about musicians who put in so much money? Who are awful? Who put in so much money to a producer who's also promising them fame and fortune? I mean, That's technically, true. it's doing the same thing. Oh, no, you're right. But I see what you're saying with the whole psychic thing. She was going. It's, I'm. It's it's when a certain amount of money starts changing hands that it, to me, becomes criminal. I mean, obviously, this is not the law, but like in my mind, it goes from something a little shitty to something really sinister when you when you bankrupt somebody. Yeah, there's a house on Twenty Seventh and Oh that has a sign that says ten dollars for a poem reading inside. I mean, That's yeah, silly. It but seems harmless. But maybe yeah, not. it's not their fault. It's it's people go to them. They're providing a service that somebody really wants, and that's to be lied to. And if they're dumb enough to not realize it's a lie, then it's on them. Like he paid eighty thousand dollars for a golden bridge in the spirit world. World, mm -hmm. like that's which he know. may get still. Well, I didn't know it was so that that's the going rate. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, we're all gonna be pissed off when we're they start like he's gonna crawling go, across yeah, our crumbling he's wooden bridges. He's gonna go <laughs> nanner nanner from his golden bridge. Yeah, <laughs> we start selling them on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Buy it now. <laughs> Golden Bridge, <laughs> uh, barely used. <laughs> barely used. Now, now I'm worried. Now I'm thinking I need to learn spiritual carpentry. <laughs> right? <laughs> there's, a real, I mean, there's a real problem in the uh, spirit realm with my crumbling, rusted out. Probably just a plank through a swamp is what I've got at this point in nice. the spiritual world. I just have the very high rubber pants. <laughs> spiritual just, I just, rubber I, pants. I wade. I wade through. That costs you five ninety five. Oh, well. Spiritual rubber pants. <laughs> All right. Do we have enough time? Because I have one more. What do you got? You got one more? Uh, the drug uh, nicknamed Pink Viagra just cleared a major regulatory hurdle. Uh, an FDA advisory panel yeah. today gave the green light to, uh, it's called Flibansurin. <laughs> a, a, uh, a drug. <laughs> now... That uh, sounds like something that somebody made up in the middle of an improv. In the yeah, middle of an improv scene. Yeah, this is... Flippin' serum. This is my son, Phil Thomas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the drug is designed to increase sex drive of women uh, with low libido. The same panel rejected the drug twice previously. The drug made by Sprout Pharmacy uh, Pharmaceuticals uh, would be sold under the name Adye. It's, it's, I don't, they're calling it the pink Viagra. <laughs> yeah. I and, don't know uh, what that means. Well, I, you know, I thought it was like, uh, sexual, like performance enhancing, but it actually just like supposedly, uh, could increase the desires of a woman. Yeah. So men, you can still be really bad at sex. So it's, it's not, not, it's like, not, it's not, it's not Viagra. It's an aphrodisiac. Uh, yeah. And it's actually not that effective. They found that it's. <laughs> 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 they, they, the, they tested it on a women and they're lined up in the room. So how do you feel? I told you five minutes ago. <laughs> I don't feel any. I'm not into it. It right. says that it works in less than 10% of women. Right. Oh, what? So, well, then why? What then why? That? What's and the you, placebo effect? Right? And, and you have to take it daily. Oh, come on. I am, <laughs> I, I am renaming my acoustic guitar Pink Viagra. God. <laughs> I just think it'd be funny if the drug consisted of like a Luther Vandross album and a pumpkin spice. Candy. <laughs> right? It's just like That's all it's, it like, is. it's a, giant a canister pill. of lube, yeah, and a vibrator. I'll Poster. be sure to listen to your guitar every tenth day. Oh God, Mary still hates it. You hate the idea of it. You you kind of brought up a good. Yeah. Sorry, I completely interrupted you. Yeah. What, you don't like the point. idea of it or that it's not that effective? <laughs> it's not effective. Why Why are they still trying to push it through if it's not effective? Well, the, uh, the you know, they're actually women diagnosed with something where they have super low libido, and that's about 7% of all women have that. So if it works on l a little less than 10% of all women that use it, the women that actually have the... Right, but this, but that's not going to be what this is used for. This is going to be slipped into drinks at bars. Abs hey, thank no. you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely it is. That's the first, first thing, thing I thought, I thought of. of. It was yeah. just one more thing to go in inside it drinks. Does, it doesn't work And if you like weren't that, thinking though. it, then there, there it is. It's something you have to take daily. Oh, yeah, to, that's right. You have to build 
upset. People who put things in drinks don't think like that. They're just going to put it in the drink. So, ladies out there listening, warning, if you are being brought on 10 consecutive dates <laughs> to bars <laughs> and are feeling weirdly right. horny about a guy who you thought you weren't into... <laughs> yeah. And giving in and still having that <laughs> shitty sex with that guy. Go for it, because herpes will cure cancer. <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. No cancer. Life short, get her- get herpes. Yeah. Yeah. I think I want a bumper sticker that says that for real. Life short, get you, herpes. You, yeah. Do you, you do have a lot of bumper stickers. I, I do. Yeah. I do. And they're about things I don't care about. <laughs> yeah. They are. I have an NRA sticker next to like an HRC sticker. And then one, I have a sticker that's just a strip of bacon. And one says, I love spam. And then I, right, right next to one that says, tree hugging dirt worshiper. Like they're just, <laughs> I mean. just like one of a mustache. Yeah. One of a mustache. Weird. Okay. Yeah. Did you, you put all those you, on there? Oh, right. You yeah. just saw it. No, I've been following you. you. I have them all memorized. You know, now, you that I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, I've seen you 10 days in a row at a bar. <laughs> this makes sense now. <laughs> yeah. The whole reason I started putting bumper stickers on my car anyways was because I got hit by a car and I didn't want to replace the bumper that mm-hmm. was all scratched up. So I started caring about bumper stickers. That, awesome. Yeah. Anyways. I got shows. Plugs? Yeah, yeah, let's do some plugs. It's your... I actually have shows. Yeah. What do you got? I have... Uh, I'm out of breath. All right. I'm out. Uh, I'm at Talk About It on the 18th of June. And then the next day... I'm that's doing, at Knickerbockers that's, in Lincoln, Nebraska. That's at Knickerbockers in Lincoln, Nebraska at 9 o'clock, right? Cool, yeah. And then um, I'm doing my first OK Party show. It's Battle Royale on the 19th. Hell awesome. yeah. Wow. Congrats. Yeah. Wherever that is. I've done two of those. Uh, and it's at the Lookout Lounge now. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I, James, what do you got? <laughs> uh, I'm also on Talk About It. Fabulous. Uh, on the 18th at Knickerbockers, 35 Cent Tacos, free show. Cool. Good. I'll get half off drinks, but the audience won't. Yep. So come oh, out to that. Yeah. Go see go see Taco About It at Knickerbockers and go to the Battle Royale. It's a ton of fun. Mary, what, what do you have coming up? Uh, I have a meeting with the clerk of the Supreme Court. Of Nebraska tomorrow, so I hope that goes well. Yeah, thirty-five how, how, cent tacos. How much are tickets? <laughs> uh, well, it'll be too late when you hear this. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, Rachel, beware. Yeah, uh, I'm on Zularius this fabulous this Sunday coming up. I'm cool. doing the next agree to disagree with uh, Rachel Weeks from Des Moines. We're she's uh, very funny. She's hilarious. I have a little Rachel crush on her. Yeah. I totally do. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are arguing Disney princesses versus Disney princes. Ooh. Oh, that's not even pop, hard pop, at pop, all. Popping those peas. Yeah. Intense. Uh, and da, da, always at the backline shows Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm there every 16, weekend. 1618 Harney Street in Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. Right. You're on the uh, princess side, right? I am. Uh, I'm defending princes. Ooh. Oh, I'm mm. I'm prepared for okay. it. I'm ready. Uh, I have nothing coming up, but you can hear me every Thursday morning on the Jimmy Curve podcast. So tune in next week to hear me defend myself against more things that I'm guilty or not guilty of, or just my thoughts on stuff. Uh, oh, I love stuff. Taking suggestions. <laughs> I'll spend several weeks trying to come up with some sort of trivia that actually works. All right. Uh, so thank you guys for listening. Join us next week on the Jimmy Curve Podcast. Uh, thank you to our special guest, Rachel Ware, everybody. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. Yay. Oh, my God. She's so pretty. I hope she ends up with <laughs> Luke Logan. Logan. Uh, so thanks for listening, guys, for co-host Joshua Vossler. Goodbye, everybody. And guest sidekick James Lindsay. Adios. And our special guest, Rachel Ware. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> I've been your host. And my wife, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I have been your host, Jimmy Putnam. Thank you and good night.